Welcome to the DCS Situation Report. You're expected approach time 3-4, approach button 17, the altimeter 299 or 7. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel where we discuss news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, Berkeley Hedgehog, and this week we're looking at the imminent arrival of the Apache, updates to the F-16C, and more. Marshal Victor 211, sweep you single. Let's begin with some housekeeping, and I want to welcome everyone back to the channel. After about a month off of any video making, I really appreciate everyone's patience as Mrs. Prickly Hedgehog and I emptied the entire upstairs portion of the house and had the floors completely redone. That project wrapped up last Thursday afternoon, but we then had to wait another 48 hours before we could move any furniture. I've now got the computer up and running, but she now wants to look at revamping colors and baseboards, as well as closet spaces. So the list goes on, we're not quite done yet. Of course, all of these concerns pale into insignificance when we look at the death and destruction going on in Ukraine starting late last month. We're staring down the barrel of an all-out war in Europe as Russian artillery remodels Ukraine into a bloody wasteland, the likes of which we haven't really seen since World War II. I know much of you haven't felt much like playing DCS World out of respect, which is understandable. While this video's focus is not on the war itself, I feel at least obliged to acknowledge the conflict and the massive human tragedy as a result. It does also raise some questions about ED's ability to function with officers in Moscow under the sanctions that have been imposed. That might be a discussion for a later video I'm kicking around, but for now at least, based on the videos from WAGS, it looks mostly like business as usual for Evil Dynamics. Speaking of WAGS and ED, this week's activities have focused on the impending release of the Apache, which has been delayed several times. The cause of the delay is all but irrelevant now, but you may recall some impediments cropped up with tweaks needed to the flight model in certain transitional phases, among other things. ED brought in help from the Hind development team, and over the last month and a half, it appears they have ironed out some of the kinks preventing it from being released. Casmo TV showcased some multiplayer action with WAGS and other testers in a nighttime mission recently, illustrating the aircraft's capability, which looked absolutely fantastic. We also had a big announcement recently that the module had gone gold. Now, this is an old software development term referring to the fact that the product is basically ready for delivery, and short of a major glitch in the code, no further changes will be made prior to general availability. As stated in some of the community posts recently that I made, I suspect that we may see the Apache released as early as this week as part of an open beta patch that will also see some huge updates to the Viper. Some of you may have seen WAGS' recent video on that module and of course Growling Sidewinder's expose on the Viper's flight model. As for the Apache, ED also released the early access manual in PDF form. It's naturally some 300 plus pages so many of us are going to need some homework time. That's usually the way though with these complex study sims and I think it's fair to say that the Apache is going to keep me busy between other projects. The teasers that we've seen over the last few weeks have been particularly impressive and I am definitely going to need to set up my controllers and tweak my settings to better prep for a productive learning experience with this amazing helicopter. Fortunately, WAGS did a video on that aspect over the weekend and overall, I'd say it looks absolutely fabulous, and it's going to be, of course, a very, very popular module with so many fans of the Apache waiting for a modern combat helicopter in DCS world. Yes, neutral. Area 63. Yes, on bit check that. PDCP. Uh, landing. Okay, I'll fit. In addition to that fabulous news, we also got a snippet from the Kiowa team, Polychop, that their staff member who was off sick for a long period of time is back to health and has rejoined the team, so their business is going ahead in leaps and bounds. Hopefully we'll see some more updates from that team as the year progresses. Additionally, of course, Miltech 5 has also been pumping out a lot of pictures on the BO-105, which has garnered quite a growing list of fans recently as it starts to shape up as another viable light attack helicopter worthy of keeping our eyes on. 
the plethora of helicopters joining the DCS stable is actually pretty encouraging and all of this low-level flying is going to generate some interesting periphery content, I think. One will naturally be the missions and campaigns for these modules, but secondly, I think, I suspect ED is going to get big demand from players looking for more ground-based content, both from a visual experience and also for targeting purposes. Eight Echo Marshall, we just trained, uh, changed transponders in the tech and how's it looking now? Speaking of ground-based matters, Eagle Dynamics advised on some updates to existing maps, which also looked pretty promising. The first is something that we discussed uh, a long time ago on its release, and that is the World War II version of the Marianas Islands map. Now, according to ED, except for the presence of a naval administration on the island, pre-war Guam was basically a land of farmers and fishermen living a simple and peaceful life. The U.S. territory of Guam and the Northern Islands, which are part of the Japanese World War I mandate, will be included in the initial early access release. A number of Japanese settlements and local Chamorros regions, as well as agricultural pastures, predominantly sugarcane fields, are visible in the development screenshots, which hopefully you are seeing now. The task of creating this map to match the visual quality and accuracy of the modern Marianas map includes new texturing to most of the land masses and creating countless new objects as well. There's a pretty large task they described and it is making steady progress. They're looking forward to our comments um, about the map. So let me know in the comments below what you think and give ED some feedback. In addition to the Marianas updates, Ugra Media have been expanding the Syrian map, which many of you will also be aware of based on some of WAGS's recent videos. They're moving it eastward by 250 kilometers to Deir Izor airbase in Syria. I hope I got that pronunciation correct. A large section of the Euphrates River Valley in the eastern part of the map will also be included as well as parts of western Iraq to include H3, H3 Northwest, H3 Southwest and Ruwayshid air bases. We can also look forward to the Ataturk Dam and San Dirfa International Airport in Turkey. Also be on the lookout for the abandoned dirt airfield east of Sekal Air Base and Tal Saman military base located to the north of the city of Raqqa. The Karab Ish helicopter base located on the territory of the Lafarge factory at Tanf military base on the Syrian-Iraqi border and the oil facilities in the Deir Izzor area are also included. Now the focus on the map update is to better support historic AH-64D missions during the war on ISIS. So lots of theaters to play in there. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. It's gonna be fun to be able to whiz around in the Apache. Looking forward to seeing what those uh, extensions to the map look like and what uh, challenges they bring for ground-based operations and low-level hell operations with the chopper. As I said, this is pretty exciting and will provide some interesting mission options. And I note here too that the Syrian expansion is free. I believe the Marianas is also, but I'll have to double check on that. But uh, let me know if you know anything already. I believe it is free, but if, you, if I'm wrong, let me know. Now expect some major updates to the Viper also in this next open beta patch, which were showcased as mentioned last week by WAGS. These center on the flight model, of course, and sustained G rates of turn, instantaneous turn rates, and subsidiary performance parameters in high G maneuvers, which had been questioned as not representative of the jet's true performance. Obviously, all of these things are relative based on fuel load, load out, etc. But the early impression from Growling Sidewinder indicated a much nimbler aircraft in the turn and acceleration envelopes of its performance. And that, of course, is the bread and butter of the F-16. It is a purpose-built interceptor and dogfighting aircraft, which also happens to be pretty good at other tasks as well. Now, WAGS has already covered some of this in a previous recent video, but the aircraft is going to receive updates to the data link communications that permit sharing of sensor point of interest, mark points, and harm target systems uh, emitter locations. There are plans for more data link features in the future, and if you saw the WAGS video, it was pretty obvious that there are massive benefits to this system for multiplayer environments. And these updates are gonna bring um, a lot more interesting information for us to dissect and share between players, which is really, really cool. Now, of course, as I said, it's all good news for one of the more lethal platforms in DCS world, at least perhaps until the Eurofighter Typhoon variant super cruises its way into the game, hopefully sometime in 2023. 
Stay tuned for more information on that aircraft as the year progresses, along with the Phantom F4, which of course is being built by Heat Blur Simulations. Well, I think that wraps up another DCS situation report for this week. I hope to see you again with more content soon. I'm glad to be back and I'm looking forward to chatting with you all again in the comments section. Let me know what you're looking forward to in this open beta patch. Is it a little Apache, some Viper action, or is it a bit of both? Are you hanging on maybe for another module? We'll see you next time. This is Prickly Hedgehog, out.